Hi, my name is Pastor Deliska. And I'm Pastor Jeff. And we are here to just introduce you to this Rock Kids 101 training. I'm so excited. And I'm totally stoked about this. It's gonna be awesome. You know what this means? You're gonna be getting all the tools that you need today so that you can feel completely equipped for um, being in the classroom, volunteering, and just being the most amazing connection point with our kiddos. I'm super excited. But you know what? This hmm. means you guys are a part of the team. Yay! So exciting. Awesome. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, really. so you know what? Just stay tuned, pay attention. Guys, this is really important stuff. This is so you can be safe. This is so our kiddos can be safe. This is so we know what to do in case of emergency. But guys, this is gonna help equip you to be the best you can be while you're in that classroom. And that small, like little window of time that you've got with our kiddos, right? Yep, I love it. It's gonna be <laughs> awesome. So stay tuned. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Hey, we're pastors Jeremy and Lynette Miller and we're from the Rock Madison campus. This is Rock Kids 101. We're gonna talk about where you fit in as a servant leader. So for each of our services and each campus may vary, we need to have lead teachers and assistant teachers. We're also gonna need coordinators, those that can work in a frontline capacity. We're gonna need actors and puppeteers. We're gonna need check-in assistants and those that can help with greeting. Some of these positions you might have to complete next steps for. And in Rock Kids Elementary, there's many positions to serve as an adult as well. And we have places for your students as well. Those 12 to 18 can serve as a 410, helping with services in various capacities. And don't forget about Wednesday nights. Rural Rangers and She Girls are vital ministries at The Rock. There's plenty of places to help and be hands-on. You can be just assistant or lead teachers. There's just tons of opportunities to work with kids. So our communication will also vary by campus. Sometimes it'll be somebody just meeting you and asking you to sign up for your week, but you'll always receive an email confirming that you are working that Sunday and different means of communication throughout the week. Next, we're gonna talk about how to keep your kids and you safe in the classroom. First of all, please arrive 30 minutes prior to your service time. This will allow you to pray and prepare, and before that, check in with your service coordinator. Please remember that we need to keep a minimum of two adults at all times. Please wash your hands or use hand sanitizer prior to entering a classroom. Put away all electronic devices. We do not allow you to use your cell phone to entertain or pacify a kid. Please put it away. Next, no social media. We don't want pictures or any identifying information posted online in any way. And we're gonna talk about what you should wear when you're in the classroom. Pants and skirts are acceptable, but make sure that they're modest. Also, leggings are fine, but make sure your behind is completely covered. You can wear your Rock Kids shirt, and we pre prefer you to wear your Rock Kids shirt. You should have one. If you don't have one and life happens on Sunday, an apron will be given to you to wear for that service. No coffee in the classrooms. Absolutely no coffee in the classrooms. We don't want any accidents. No strong perfume or cologne or smoky smelling clothes. No sharp edged jewelry, ladies. And we don't dispense any, dispense any kind of medication, especially EpiPens in the classroom. First, I want to say this. We never physically discipline a child. We never grab, lift, pull, yank, or hold back a child by their arm or wrist even in play or sometimes even in efforts to redirect them. Sometimes a child is being disruptive, not being kind, or not listening. Later in this training video, you'll hear some tips on how to handle some of these situations, but please defer to your lead teacher or coordinator for assistance. If a child is inconsolable or displaying dangerous behavior, please reach out to a coordinator for immediate assistance. Also contact a coordinator if a child in your class displays any of these symptoms, fever, rash, diarrhea, vomiting, a deep cough, runny nose or eyes with less than clear discharge, or any other contagious symptoms. To keep our kiddos and servant leaders safe, we have a two deep bathroom policy. That means that whenever we need to escort a child to the restroom, that two leaders are present. If you need to enter the restroom to assist kiddos, be sure to have your second leader within your eyesight and you in theirs at all times. 
We always want to allow a child privacy, but if a small child needs assistance in the actual bathroom stall, only female servant leaders may assist them with the stall door open and within eyesight of another leader. I can't stress this enough. We really don't want any adult to be visually alone with a child at any time. If your second leader does not follow you into the restroom, go ahead and ask them to follow you to be your second set of eyes. If you are unable to bring a second leader with you, please reach out to a coordinator or member of the frontline team to come in and be your second. This bathroom policy is really important, so we wanna make sure that we have eyes on each other at all times. At the Huntsville campus, we have special bathrooms that are just for preschoolers. The only adults that are to be in that classroom are those who are actively serving and assisting children at that time. Sometimes servant leaders need to bring their own kids into the restroom. We ask that they also follow this policy and either take a second person with them or use the normal bathrooms. The reason why we ask this is that sometimes families don't know you or your child and we want them to know that we take this policy seriously and that their kids are safe. For diaper changes, only adult female leaders over the age of 16 can change diapers. Sorry guys, no poop for you. Gloves and changing pads must be changed between each diaper change and they are available right there at the diaper stations. Just as we talked about before, leaders must be within eyesight of each other during diaper changes or bathroom trips at all times. Adherence to these policies is to keep you and our rock kids safe. Hi, my name is Deliska Lombard, and my husband and I are the children's pastors at the Huntsville campus here at the Rock Family Worship Center. So we want to talk um, for this portion about being mindful of how we interact with our children. So we're so excited that you have joined the team to be a volunteer, and we just want to give you like some tips and some things that you need to keep in mind when you are walking out being in the classroom with children. So one of those is we do things a little bit differently. We do things um, differently in these classrooms so that we can keep our children safe and so that we can keep you guys safe as well. So on that note, we give side hugs. We don't go give full on bear hugs. Now I know some of our littles, they like to run up and they'll grab our leg and just want to give us a big old hug. We understand that. But just on the whole, if someone's approaching you and you've got an opportunity, you can just switch yourself to the side and give a little quick side hug. We give side hugs. We don't have any kissing. Um, after the age of two, no sitting on laps. We do that for our guys and our gal volunteers. We ask that if a child comes and tries to sit in your lap after the age of two, that you can just redirect them and you can do that in love and you can just say, okay, buddy, let's sit right here next to Miss Deliska. And that way we're still showing that we wanna be close, but we're being safe. Um, the next thing that we don't do is we don't have any rough housing. Now, I say this for some of our younger volunteers, they love to connect with kids by just doing those fun, rough play games. But when we're in the classroom, no rough housing. And that means uh, we're not swinging kids around, we're not throwing kids in the air, we're not pay doing a piggyback ride. Again, we're trying to keep uh, a, some distance between us and the child when it comes to keeping ourselves safe. We wanna make sure that we incorporate that, so no piggyback rides. And guys, no tickling. That's something that, you know, I didn't think we needed to mention maybe a few years ago, but it's important. We don't do tickles. Um, we can let them save that for family time, but we don't have any tickling in the classroom. We do these things. These are some of the things that you can do. If you say, Pastor Veliska, you're telling me all these things I can't do. It sounds like I'm gonna have to be a robot. I promise you don't have to do that. There's lots of fun interactions you can have with a kid that are safe for you to do. And so some of those are, we give high fives. That's right, you can say, give me a big high five. We do pats on the shoulder. We do thumbs up. Can I get a thumbs up? Yes. And we do elbow bumps. Of course, that's become really popular in the last year, but we've been doing elbow bumps for a while. We do fist bumps and positive words. So when you think about it, when I go into a classroom with a child, I try to modify my voice so it can be super kind. When I'm talking to adults, I have a different voice that I use, but when I'm talking to kiddos, I get that fun voice and I use that fun tone so that they can know that I am playfully engaging with them. And so we can use our soft voice and use our fun voice as well to show that we're connecting with our kids. 
there's something that we want you guys to know, and it's for your safety and it's for our kids' safety. Never be alone with a child. We have a model in the classroom where it's a too deep model, and that means you're gonna have another volunteer in the classroom with you. And so even at the beginning, if you don't have that other volunteer with you yet, you can say, you know what, I'm not ready quite yet. We've gotta wait for my other volunteer to get there. But that also extends to when we're going to bathroom time. So when you go to the bathroom, you're gonna have a too deep policy. We do that for the kids' safety and for yours as well. The other thing that you might not think that you need to bring up, but sometimes this happens, and it usually can happen in an instant, and that is where a kiddo comes up to you and says, can I tell you a secret? Well, we don't keep secrets, and we wanna make sure that we set the stage for our kiddos so we don't set them up for failure. So we say to them, you know what, buddy? I can't promise that, I won't, that I'll keep a secret because if something's happening to you and uh, you're in trouble or if you're being harmed or you're harming someone else, I have to let an adult know. So we just say we don't keep secrets. And that can happen even if it's prayer time. We don't keep secrets. We can pray with you, but we can't promise we're not, that we're gonna keep secrets. Um, I want you guys to just remember in these moments that we wanna be mindful about how we interact. So we don't tell our kiddos that they're being a bad kid or that they're being an awful person or that they're being rotten. Sometimes, and I remember growing up, I would have times where people would say that to me, sometimes even playfully. But there's some times where a kid can act up in class and you are overwhelmed with that thought of saying, you know what, you are just being bad today. But guys, we wanna make sure that we don't level at the action or the misbehavior that we're seeing at the time, but that we speak to the person that they are in Christ. Hey buddy, and this is my example, I'm showing you an example. Hey buddy, I know that you are such a good kiddo and I know you know how to obey. And so even though you're not doing right that, that right now, I wanna talk to you about being the person that God created you to be. And so we're gonna to obey today, okay? I need you to practice that with me. So instead of saying, you know what, you're rotten or I don't like what you're doing and that's terrible, they may have just been having a bad day. They may have gone through something before they came in the class. And so that brings me to my next point, and that we wanna make sure that when our kiddos come into class that we use a godly lens to look at them through, and that we also realize that we don't know what they've been through before they came in. We don't know if they're dealing with a death in the family. We don't know if they are dealing with a special need that may they may be working through at home. We don't know if they may have had a rough week. Maybe families are going through a divorce or something else, a, a big uh, job change or in a new house. And all of those things can affect our kiddos. So we have to remember when they come in the classroom that we don't know all the information, but we just need to be sensitive for where they are when they come in and they meet us at the point of crossing through that door. And so let's be sensitive that those kiddos may be um, experiencing something that we're not aware of, and let's have a gentleness of heart and a gentleness of spirit when we are dealing with our kiddos during that hour and a half time frame that they are with us. It's a small frame of time. We don't get a whole lot during the week, so we wanna make the most of that. Now, does that mean that we let the kids get away with anything they want? Well, of course not. We have to have discipline in the classroom. We have to have boundaries, but we wanna make sure that they're bathed and partnered in love. We wanna make sure that our connection points, and that means our loving points, the time that we're connecting with them and letting them know that they're loved and cared for, are equal to those times that we're having to put those boundaries in place and say, you're not going to be able to kick the ball onto the ceiling in the classroom because that's not safe. We need to make sure that those two things that we're doing, connecting with our kids and correcting our kids, are in balance and that they equal one another. Does that make sense? So we do have boundaries in the classroom, but we make sure that they are bathed in love and that we have understanding for those moments that we're caring for our kiddos. If you're um, engaging with a kiddo and you're standing quite a few feet above them, right? Because you're a tall person and they're a small person. Sometimes it can be hard and intimidating for them seeing you, they don't mind, I know you very well, might not be super familiar with you, but you can um, find a way to get on eye level with them. Sometimes just getting down on one knee, making good eye contact with them and using your kind voice, you can connect with that child in a special way. 
so that they can know that they're loved and accepted in that classroom. So you can practice at home. I know it sounds silly, but you can practice with your own kids or you can practice with your nieces and nephews or your grandkids. And you can also practice in the mirror, having that soft voice, having those kind eyes and connecting with the kids in your class. I'm telling you guys, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. You have been anointed and you have been appointed for this purpose and for this season to be able to love on these children. And it is the greatest gift that you could give. And so I want to encourage you that you have the tools that you need. You're gaining the tools by being in this 101 class and by praying before you come into the classroom, you'll have everything you need to minister to those kiddos. So let's be mindful about how we're interacting with them in class. And I look forward to seeing you guys serving on Sunday. I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Hey guys, it's Pastor Jeff. I'm here to cover the uh, policy and procedures for emergency situations. Now, we face emergency situations uh, not all the time, but when they do come up, there's a lot of questions that do come up. Um, I will be covering a few things right here uh, as far as fire evacuation, tornadoes, um, active shooter, things of that nature, just kind of give you an idea of what what we feel would be the best way to handle those situations. Now, first of all, when you come into your room, the one thing you have, and it's the most important piece of paper that you have at every class, is a list of everybody that's in the room. I need to make sure that you understand you have to put the teacher's names on it as well so we have an accurate account of everybody that's in that room. It would be a really bad situation if we had somebody missing and we didn't have that piece of paper to look at, we didn't have the information that we needed right in front of us, so that piece of paper is vitally important. You write down everybody's name that comes in the classroom, including the teachers, leads, and everybody that's in there. And as we go through this, you'll realize how important that piece of paper actually is. If there is a fire in the building, security will be in the hallways to make sure they're getting everybody where they need to go. One thing that you need to make sure of in case you're uh, out of the building first um, and you call 911, you need to have some things available. You need to have your name ready. You need to have the address of the church, which is 3401 Holmes Avenue Northwest. But get that in your mind in case you're that person, all right? And then uh, about where the fire is located in the building. You may not have that information, but at least they know to get on site. In that situation, Make sure you don't freak out. You wanna make sure you keep the kids as calm as humanly possible. Um, notify, you can literally walk out in the hallway and say fire. It tends to get everybody's attention, um, but make sure that you're keeping all the kids calm and make sure that as you exit, it's not in a mad rush We nobody wants to get trampled or anything like that. So there will be a fire evac plan on each door on the inside of the room so you know it's available. So if you have any questions, boom, you can refer to that super quick and out the door. Second, tornadoes. Um, tornadoes are a very tricky thing. Uh, they're, they're instant, quick, quick, fast, in a hurry. Um, most of the time, sirens will hit off and we'll know exactly what's happening. Uh, security, if there is a weather event, they're on top of it, they're watching the weather, they're making sure everybody's safe. If it comes down to it and there is a tornado, it's on site, a warning has been issued, what you need to do is you need to go to an interior room uh, somewhere where there's no windows to make sure that there's no flying glass or anything, but get to a place where there's no windows on an interior room. If you don't have anything but a hallway, make sure you sit up against the wall as close as possible, head down, hand behind your head, making sure that you're away from the windows as well and away from flying debris. But what it'll do is it'll keep you safe in a hallway against that wall. Just make sure you're trying to find a room that is like reinforced concrete or whatever it is, but into your rooms are your best bet. Um, if you're at the Huntsville campus, the Huntsville campus is a bomb shelter anyway, so it's pretty much, you know, it's almost indestructible. So it's one of those things, but at the outlying uh, satellite campuses, making sure that you are uh, being aware of your interior rooms and focusing again. Security should be on top of it and they will help you in any situation when it comes to that. One I don't like to talk about but in our in the day and age that we live in it's 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 an actual possible thing so I don't want anybody to freak out about this but in case there is an active shooter situation now I'm gonna read the active shooter stuff because I don't want to miss anything because this stuff is vitally important so in case there's an active shooter scenario remain calm and dial 911 immediately sometimes the, the remain calm part is the hardest part if you're unable to speak when you call 911 because 
the, the, the activity is already too close to you, the best thing to do is just leave the line open so the dispatch can hear what's going on around. Even if you can't speak, just leave the line open. Make sure your cell phones are silenced. Um, in case that happens, you hear from security, say, hey, we've got a situation. Immediately silence anything that's making any noise in the room, especially with you guys in Rock Kids Junior. Um, there's a lot of noisemakers in there. We need to make sure that those are pushed off to the side pretty quick. All phones are on silent. If you're instructed to evacuate, do not take anything with you. Leave it all. It's not worth going back and getting anything. Trust me, just leave it and move on. If you are instructed to shelter in place, what you need to do um, right off the bat is make sure the kids are in a safe location within the room and start barricading the door with whatever is available to barricade the door. If you got a lock on the door, brilliant. Lock the door, but if you don't, make sure that you're putting things in front of the door to barricade it. Again, I know this is a lot of information about active shooters, but I, I just don't want anything to happen to you or any of the kids, so that's why I'm going over this. Keep your hands visible. So if you hear police officers or you hear security and they're in the hallways, make sure your hands are visible. You want them to know that you're not the bad guy. You're the friendly and you wanna make sure that you keep your hands visible. If you're instructed by um, the security team that it's safe to come out, make sure that it's either security or law enforcement that is telling you it's safe to come out of your room and make sure if you need to get that, that voice recognition uh, absolutely give it and make sure that you're you're being completely safe with you and the kids. Follow the instructions of security and police officers. If they're telling you exactly what to do, you need to move quickly in case they are telling you to get out of the building while they have the situation under control. But just making sure you're being very, very cognitive of everything that's going on around you when it comes to an active shooter. And again, I hate to cover that, but it is one of those things in the day and age that we live in that's got to be covered. As far as lockdown procedures go, uh, lock all the doors and make sure that you only open them for coordinators, security, or pastors because sometimes a coordinator will be out in the hall, they'll hear some information instead of busting in a room, they'll get to a safe place elsewhere and until you can get a voice recognition from them, a pastor, law enforcement, or security, you need to stay in lockdown until everything's passed. Keep classroom activities as normal as possible. If you need to be quiet, play the quiet game. It's perfectly fine. Uh, kids will understand that. They've played the quiet game before, but try to keep it as normal as possible. And your job is to not overreact to anything. I know that's a big ask because some people, you know, fight or flight, it, they get in that situation. But understand what the best thing you can do is keep calm and just uh, keep a level head about it and just pay attention to your surroundings and what's going on and don't freak the kids out, <laughs> whatever you do. No child is to be checked out of the classroom until a pastor, security, or uh, a leader or their actual parent comes to get them out and only after the lockdown has been lifted. If the lockdown is still in place, nobody leaves. That is just procedure across the board. Nobody goes anywhere until the lockdown is lifted, plain and simple. As upset as people may get about that, our job is once those kids come into our care, our job is to make sure that they're safe and we, we're gonna do that you know, the best we can. When it comes to a missing child, uh, let the teachers know immediately and the moment that happens, the lockdown procedures will take place. Not only lockdowns for other things, but lockdowns for this immediately. As soon as we realize that there's a child missing, boom, we go into lockdown mode. Making sure you let the coordinators know and you let security know, hey, we've got a child we can't locate and we need your help finding them. Until then, nobody leaves a room, nobody's in the hallway, nobody moves an inch until that child gets located. The best thing to figure out if a child is actually missing is to <laughs> go back and check that list I was talking about earlier. Because if you look at that list and you realize that everybody's on that list and that person was just around the corner hiding behind something because they had got behind the picnic table and fell asleep in the classroom, all of a sudden we're, you know, we're in a situation where we're looking for a kid that's been in the room the whole time. So just make sure you're doing a head count in your room. If you feel that you're missing a child, if you are, then security's on top of it, coordinators on top of it, and we'll have everything on lockdown until that child is found. Making sure, as far as that list goes, that everybody's name's on it. Not just the kids, but all the workers, volunteers, teachers, everybody that will be in that classroom. So if you do have to evacuate, you grab that piece of paper and you take it with you. So when you get to a secure location, you check that piece of paper and say, okay, I had seven kids and two helpers and me, and we're all on this piece of paper and we're all there. If that's not happening, then we need, that gives us the ability to go and find 
whoever's missing. So that piece of paper is vitally important. Now, these are some of the things that we encounter the most. I say the most. It's the one things that I want us to, to cover. There are other things uh, like earthquakes and things of that nature and floods, but you know, it's one of those things where if there's an earthquake, you just, you know, you get underneath the table. If there's a flood, don't get in the water. You know, it's just one of those things. So when it comes to these procedures, I'm, it, I'm, big, I'm a big believer in, in emergency evacuation programs. And what we have in place is working right now. We haven't had any of these situations happen, so don't think this is a common place. But if they do, I wanna make sure that you guys are totally informed because our job as pastors and workers and people in this church is our job is to make sure that you guys and the kids are completely and totally safe and we want to take every precaution necessary to make sure that happens so i hope this helps you out making sure that you got this on lockdown um i love you guys i think you're amazing thank you so much for helping us out and uh we'll talk to you later Hey guys, we're Pastors Ben and Julie from the Rock Fayetteville campus. We are so excited to be with you guys uh, and go through this teaching with you guys. And that's what it definitely has been, right? We've learned some things to do and we've definitely learned some things not to do, right? But they're all vital and really, really, really important uh, as we serve these kids. Now, we talk about serving, we talk about doing things. What exactly does it mean to be a servant leader? I'm so glad that you asked me that because I've been waiting to talk about this. And I'm gonna put it in really simple terms because the, the term servant leader can sound really intimidating, mm -hmm. uh, but truly it is as simple as being a godly leader, yeah. just like Jesus was when he washed the feet of his disciples. Yeah. Servant leadership is influencing and equipping and empowering people to accomplish God's purpose and plan for their lives. Mm -hmm. It's serving others so unselfishly while influencing and empowering them to grow in a Christ-centered purpose. Yeah, I love reading about the life of Jesus because in everything he did, he found little opportunities just to be who he was. Yes. And in him being who he was, people were dramatically impacted and their lives were shifted forever, right? And that's exactly what we want to do here at The Rock. We want, you know, in the way that we talk, in the way that we think, in the way that we do things, to be a, a missionally minded representation of Jesus yeah. wherever we go and in whatever we do, right? It's not up to me to decide if it, that's good enough or not good enough, right? It's in exactly what I do. As I follow procedures and protocols, he shows up and he meets these kids and he reveals destiny to our kiddos. Yes, and my role and your role and all of our roles are the exact same when we're teaching these kids about Jesus. And that's just to be a bridge so they can yeah. meet the God that we know. Mm -hmm. And we all know that there is no junior Holy Spirit. There's yeah. no junior Jesus. There's no little God. We get the same God at 25, at mm -hmm. 45, at 12, at six, however old mm -hmm. you are, we all get the same God. And that's really what we want these kids to know. Yeah, so I don't necessarily want to be that guy, but I think I'm gonna have to be that guy <laughs> because it's who Jesus was, yes. right? Uh, Matthew 19, verse 13 and 14, it says this, then people brought little children, not the big guys, not the adults, little children to Jesus for him to place his hands and pray for them. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The disciples rebuked them. And Jesus said, no, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, so right? I, I think as we minister and as we do um, our daily routines is what we might think of them as, um, even in the littlest things, uh, he shows up and he reminds us of exactly who he is and uh, exactly who he called us mm -hmm. to be, right? So don't think of it as a, a big task or a little task, but in every single thing mm -hmm. that we do, we get a chance to look like Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And he shows us right here in his word um, that he cares about the little ones, right? So we should too. So we love you guys and we are just so thankful to be able to uh, go on this journey with you. So uh, we pray that you're impacted and we pray that guess what? You can impact our kiddos. We can't wait to serve with you. Okay, that was like a lot, That's a lot of, of, information. Information. A lot of information. Good so, stuff. Yeah, it's all good stuff. Wonderful. But we're doing this to make sure you guys, we're all on the same page, we're all doing the same thing, and this is very important. 
Yes, so if you guys have any questions, you're like, you know what, there's this one thing, I just don't feel like you covered and I have a quick question. There's an email down below, you guys can contact us through that, doesn't matter what campus you're at, we will get it to the people who need it so they can answer your question so that you can show up this next Sunday ready to rock. I don't know what the rest of that. Yeah, awesome. Ready to rock. See you soon. All right, bye-bye.